Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the success strategies and the secrets of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm really honored and excited for today's guest, which is really awesome. We're shooting here in San Diego, sunny weather with natural light. You just can't get any better. And I want to welcome Greg Reed to Making Bank. There you go. And you're going to hear a little bit of street noise and things. It's just part of life. We're doing it right here in my private residence. So welcome to my house. Well, Greg, so, uh, you know, just knowing, you know, seeing who you are and uh, your massive exposure online and everything else. But for some of those people that don't know who Greg Reed is, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. Actually, uh, if you don't know who I am, don't feel bad because I'm not very <laughs> popular here at home either. So I've been published now in, I think, 56 books, 45 awesome. languages. And my job is I travel the world to meet the most powerful and influential people, and I tell their story in book and film. I mean, what a gig. Phenomenal. That's awesome. I know. Huh? <laughs> you can't get any better. <laughs> Learn about them, get a book, and get a film. Yeah, you know, it seems like there's so many people that teach their coaches, teachers, mentors, authors. Sure. I said, wouldn't it be great to go right to the source, people that are getting the results you want, and ask right from the horse's mouth not only what they did, but how they did it. Sure. And then so um, I guess, first of all, tell us a little bit how you got started and got on this path. Path. All pure by accident. You okay. know, I was in advertising for 20 years of my life. I did one job. When I retired in, in my late 30s, I sold my company for a lot of money. Okay. And people said, how did you do it? I said, why well, I, I read these books. I went to these seminars. <laughs> and so they asked me to start speaking. And then I was done doing a talk and some guy said, you should write a book. I go, that's a great goal because I've never read a book. Right. <laughs> right? I mean, from beginning to end, you know, I skim through it and I do all this stuff. So I took it as a challenge and uh, it was so funny. I was turned down my first book by 268 publishers in oh, a row. Wow. The 269th one said, well, do it. All you got to do is change the title, the beginning, the middle, and the end. I didn't know what I was doing. But I took their counsel and here we are. That's awesome. And so, and I guess that got you on writing your own book mm -hmm. uh, out of the advertising agency. Uh, did you own it? Did you work for it? I mean, when did you start being an entrepreneur? Well, my whole life. So even okay. as a sales rep, I was an independent guy. And then it grew and grew. And eventually I started my own entity. And in a very short time, grew it to a multi-million dollar status. And I ended up flipping it and went on to this new, I guess, chapter of life, so to speak. Awesome. And so I guess you got your book out. What did you, I guess, what was that transformational point in your life? You're like, man, I really need to start helping other people do this for themselves. Well, it's interesting. I'm a really good student. So okay. rather than being a coach or a mentor, or one of these guys that gets on top of a soapbox and says sure. how great they are, I'm just a student. So I teach everyone exactly in real time as I'm learning it. Okay. So basically, as it comes to me, I pass it on to others. And so. And by the way, it's yeah. always changing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I yeah. Mean, I, the other day, I, I just had a conversation just yesterday down at uh, TNC. I was hanging out with some okay. people. And it says, you know, the first. 56 books that I've been part of basically is a bunch of crap. I go, you know, but all it was, I knew, all I knew is what I knew. Right. And now I think I know things differently because okay. I'm coming things at a different perspective. Sure. And so now I'm thinking, man, I think I'd go back and rework it. But more importantly, I'm just writing new work to bring this new information to life. Gotcha. Um, and one of the things I guess then with do you go to somebody and say, hey, we want to do a book? Or I guess, how do you get somebody engaged to want to do, design and do their own book? Wow. You mean someone <laughs> wanted to do their own book? or? Yeah, I mean, I guess, is yours a compilation? Or is it? Or do you go help other people do individual no, books? No, I, I do well, all the above. The okay. majority of it, I primarily just write my own books. Okay. So I've been very blessed to be commissioned by an incredible foundation. I got a Willy Wonka ticket to meet anyone on the planet Earth. But right now, I'm working on a really neat project that's called the Wealth Hack. Okay. So I, for a, about two years, I'm traveling the world. I'm meeting people worth $100 million to $1 billion, and that's wow. it. And I'm finding out exactly what they did. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's transformational. Because all this raw awesome. rust stuff and all the stuff you, you've been doing these interviews, right. I guarantee a majority of it's bullshit. Yeah. And what it comes down to is I'm realizing that the people that the, are uber wealthy, right. they're not the ones teaching it or talking about it. They're the ones who are actually doing it. Doing it. And I sat down with this multi-billionaire just recently. And I says, you know, why are you a billionaire and I'm not? And he says, because you believe the BS lies that you tell and spread to people. <laughs> went, oh. Wow. I went, okay, go <laughs> teach me. And he says, you teach people to go find their passion and the money will follow. And okay. I said, yeah. He goes, that's a complete lies. I go, what do you mean? He hmm. says, what you do is seek opportunity and you capitalize on it. And that finances 
your passion. I go, what do you mean? He says, well, 95% of businesses that fail every single year, right. it's because you get them all fired up to quit their day job, to open up that yogurt shop because that's their passion. Sure. Unfortunately, they don't go out of business because of their business acumen or money. It's because it's their baby. It is their passion. So as soon as there's a challenge, uh -huh. they'll go down and die with the ship. Right. He goes, I'm a game of frogger. I write a log. As soon as it goes under, I jump off to the next log. I can never go under because I'm never emotionally attached. And he goes, I create so much wealth and prosperity for myself. I use that to go fund orphanages and music and my passions and things wow. of that way. Okay. And he goes, until you can change your mindset, he goes, you'll never be wealthy. You'll get rich, right. but you'll never be wealthy. Wow, that's a huge transformational shift. Right. I mean, okay, oh, well, exactly. Yeah. I went, okay, well, I got to go back to my other books and go, cross that out, cross that out, right? But the whole thing is I do realize that there's many people that have been, you know, very successful living their passion. Sure. But on the same note, I'm just realizing, he looks at me and says, do you think that the Rockefellers were passionate about crude oil or the Gettys? <laughs> or do you think that the waste management, you know, is <laughs> passionate about right. yeah. trash and garbage or the aggregate people that built the roadways and freeways? He goes, but they saw an opportunity and they seized it. And they're, they're you know, the people that really control our society today. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just blows your mind because like you said you see everybody and they're teaching this one path and but then all the top wealthy people are, are on a whole different path that's just this tip of the iceberg. yeah i'm telling you so all i've been doing is traveling the world meeting with all these peoples and the information is so spectacular because it's so simple and right. i realize that we complicated because people are trying to sell a program because they don't know what the hell they're doing sure and so i realize is the people that are truly wealthy they understand a the concept they dial it in and they master it so okay. for example i sat down with that guy who's a billionaire in raw land again no real passion behind it yeah. i said <laughs> i go how do you make a billion dollars in raw land he says i find a town anywhere in the world that grows about 20 to 25 percent Okay. Let's go on Google Maps to find it anywhere. Sure. He goes, I find Main Street. I draw a line out eight miles and I buy the dirt. I rent the dirt to farmers who pay the land so it's free and I get vegetables. As the <laughs> town grows exponentially, it's on my property. I'm on Main Street. And since I own the biggest land, I sell the Costco for 100 times. Billion dollars. Wow. Yeah, and it's so simple though. And that's you how actually all sit down and think about it. All of these are. So wealth hack huh. is a journey where I'm sitting down with people that made <clears throat> billion dollars in oil or in gold or in sheepskins or whatever it right. is and i'm deducing it down to common sense for all of us to understand that's awesome and, that, and that's a book you're working on right now that's what i'm doing right now this that's i believe super exciting. i believe i've been in training my entire <laughs> career yeah. for this moment now here's the funny thing i offered a program for people to go with me it was sure. like 25 grand to travel the world for two years to meet all these people right only seven people join me and only three ever show up and wow. I think it's the funniest thing because many receive great opportunities, but not everyone capitalizes on it. For they sure. let their bad case of the once I stop them. That means <laughs> I'll get started once I get the big break or once I have right. the opportunity. But you have to seize the opportunity when it's gifted. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's taking that action. And everybody wants to have that dream and accomplish their goals. But, and they look at the journey. Right. And as soon as they start seeing those challenges, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I'm not ready for that yet. And you know, and they, God bless you, but right. they're not ready for it. Yeah. And that's what it is. You know, it's interesting. They talk about the law of attraction, you know, whatever you th think about naturally comes sure. to be. But it's the action behind attraction that makes your dreams come true. Think it, yes. Feel it, of course. Right. But ultimately, you got to get off your ass and you got to do, do it. it. And it's the people that are willing to do those actions okay. today have the brighter tomorrows that everyone wants to have for themselves. Sure. Uh, so along your journey here, what would you say your, were the three key strategies that have gotten you to your success today? Uh, I'll just, only one. Okay. App application. Okay. Can That's it. Application. I am getting amazing information and I'm applying it right. and getting the results that most people would like for themselves. I'm, I'm just a regular cat. I got a <laughs> D in English. I barely graduated high school, never went to college. I'm a regular guy. The only thing I do differently is I get amazing information and apply it. Look, I'll give you the greatest information I've ever gotten in my life. Sure. The guy who invented string theory, John Schwartz, taught me this. Okay. He said, successful people seek and apply counsel where failures listen to opinion. I go, what's the difference? He goes, opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge, like all your family, friends who've never done it. Right. Counsel's based on wisdom, knowledge, mentorship, people have paved the way. Sure. If you go to okay. family, friends, say you're going to write a book, they'll talk you out of it because they've never done it. Right. If you go to Mark Victor Hansen who wrote Chicken Soup, <laughs> he'll yeah. say, before you get started, here's what you need to know. 
John Schwartz said, if we would spend our activity only seeking counsel and ignoring people's opinion, that's the day your life would change. Okay. So every yeah. single day I seek and apply counsel. And so I guess with so much, I guess, information out there and counsel out there, how do you sift through what is good, what's bad? I don't. I okay. sift through the people that are getting the results I want. It's okay. all actionable steps. Okay. Look, I, people that are teaching it, I have no interest in. Okay. I just gotcha. don't. I, I, I know those who can do, those who can't teach. Right. And it's a true philosophy for a reason. Oh, yeah. So if I want to start a nonprofit, I go to the founder of Make-A-Wish and say, sure. how did you do it? Right now, I'm making my first major feature film this year. So I'm going to Oscar-winning producers. I'm right. saying, how do you do it? Because if you surround yourself with people who are doing what you want, ultimately can get it for yourself. A few years ago, I went to Africa and climbed Count Mil Kilimanjaro. I did not cool. ask some surfer guy here along the beach to ask me, you know, take me up. I, I found the Sherpa that had climbed it seven, eight hundred times. Right. Wherever they put their boot print, I put my boot print because I knew awesome. they'd make it to the right. top. It's the same thing. When I wanted to write a book, I didn't go to people who wrote books. I went to people who sold books. They're two different people. Definitely. And so that's my mentality. Who's getting the results that I want and surround yourself with them? And, you know, I guess... It sounds like you, you. It sounds like uh, it's pretty easy you, you, for you to reach out to them. Or I mean, like, oh, oh, it's <laughs> easy for you too. It's easy for you too. It's easy for everybody. Right. But people just don't do it. They let stinking thinking fear stop them. For sure. And the greatest fear that holds people back is the fear of criticism. What other people will think. And here's a newsflash: No one's thinking about you. They're dealing <laughs> with their own stuff, right? Right. So the whole thing is just take action and reach out. Uh, the funny thing is, the most successful people are also the most available. If you're brand True. new at something, you're happy-go-lucky. If you're at the pinnacle, happy-go-lucky. In the middle, complete pain in the ass. You're <laughs> filled with ego. You're edging God out, finding your own voice. Right. So I say, in school, you got in trouble for cutting the line. In life and business, that's all I do all day. That's awesome. And it, it makes now, you know, listening to you talk about it, that makes total sense, because you, you're lining yourself with those people that are getting the results and moving forward. So I guess, for somebody that's watching and they're like, hey man, I'd, lo I'd love to connect with XYZ to help me go do this mm -hmm. or to learn from. Right. What, how would you tell them to go about that? Like, Just Google. <laughs> that's all, well, I don't know. Google and email them? I Google and email. I mean, it's, that's all I do. I mean, what's a big secret? Well, yeah, because people think it's so, it's complicated, right. it's hard. How many people are working here right now? Right? Yeah. This is me. So right. that's what I do. I Google, reach out, and you'll find that the most successful people are also the most available people. I started an event a few years ago in my private home with 12 people called Secret Knock. Okay. And the whole idea is I say, give me a bunch of money, but I won't tell you where it is or who's going to be there. <laughs> that's and how we do it today. Right. So, sold out, staying room only every single year. We just hit Inc., Forbes, and Entrepreneurs List of top events. Because what we do is we under, under promise and we super over deliver. Okay. And our whole concept is what if I could put in an environment where all these amazing people I have a chance to interview, I give you full access to. And not where there's a VIP room or all that crap where you gotta pay money to take a picture. I mean, they hang out for a couple of days so you have lunch and have a beer with the founder of Make-A-Wish. If you have an invention, we right. bring in the guy who invented the credit card magnetic strip. <laughs> right. If you're gonna start a clothing line, I bring in the founder of Ugg Boots. I got Tonino Lamborghini flying in from Italy. How do you surround yourself with the people who are actually doing what you want? That's awesome. And that's it. And so, uh, so your secret knock group, um, what, uh, and so it's surrounding the best people That's it. together. And we pre-qualify every person. So everyone, okay, has, that's to, what I was gonna, everyone yeah. has to apply at secretknock.co. We even left the M off so no one could find us. <laughs> and the whole concept is, is that you go through a screening process to make sure you don't have a tin foil hat or talk to dead aliens through your cat. <laughs> right. And the whole idea is if I'm going to introduce you to my friends, I want to make sure that you have a value to bring to the table as much as uh, I know that you'll receive. Sure, that's awesome. What a weird idea, it's, huh? No, it, it's cool because, I mean, there's different masterminds and different groups and everything out there. No, there and, are no masterminds. Those are semicircles where a guru points his finger and tells you what he is doing and what you should do. Right. That's not a real mastermind. The okay. definition of a mastermind uh, was basically from the original days of Thomas Edison where he was the first person to bring in like mines from Russia and Germany and from you know Switzerland and from China, which was crazy back sure. in the late 1800s and 1900s. But that's how they had the brain trust to work on a common goal. And then together, okay. they did something. That's called a mastermind. Uh, most people, what they're doing is basically uh, not. 
<laughs> so, yeah, so they're saying it's kind of their own group that they're just... Yeah, you call it what people. you like yeah. to do, but it's not really a mastermind. Okay. A mastermind, again, I've got a group where every two months, amazing people come from all around the world, and it's just 12, 13 of us guys, and we sit there and say, here's a problem, here's a situation, right. and we have amazing minds looking at it one time. You have no idea the power from that. That's awesome. But what happens usually is it's one person filling their ego right. with a bunch of people paying them a bunch of money. So I'm just being clear with it. No, definitely. No, that's... I see it everywhere. And <laughs> I'm the only realist, I think, in this industry to keep it, you know. And well, I mean, because people watch, I mean, there's so many different options, I guess, out there mm -hmm. people see. And like, well, how do I differentiate? How do I know where to go? And, and so getting your perspective with what you guys do. Um, compared to what's also available. Yeah, out so there. you can start your own group. I mean, that's right. what's really neat because a real fun mastermind is when you put yourself in a hot seat and say, look, here's my name, here's what I'm working on, here's some challenges. And then you have nine or 10 people all putting their spotlight to help that one individual. And then the next person and the next person. That's spectacular because oh, yeah. then all of a sudden you're getting that attention. Uh, so for you, then, and then you say you're making a movie. Yeah. So. Give us a little bit of information if you're able to. Yeah, absolutely. So back to the Make-A-Wish guy. He's uh, 74 years old. Okay. Uh, when I saw him, he was 71. We were done doing our interview, and I've taken off my microphone. And I go, oh, by the way, i got to ask, what was your wish? What did you ask for? Right. And he goes, no one ever asked me. Wow. I says, well, I'm your genie. Whatever your wish is, <laughs> no matter what, I promise you I'll grant your wish. And he sure. says, I just want my story to be told so my grandkids know I did something cool. I said, sign over your life rights. I'm going to make it into a major feature film. The only challenge is I've never made a feature film, but he trusted me. <laughs> and this year we're going into production, filming and the whole bit. And it's really cool. I went to his hometown in Prescott, Arizona. Sure. And he got the city council mayor to chip in. They're giving us the roadways and freeways and buildings. So the whole hook is an entire city is going to come out to grant the wish of the founder of Make-A-Wish. That's really cool. Neat, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because what you said was nobody's ever asked him. Nobody ever asked him. It's like the pretty girl. It was girl that, that simple. The pretty girl that... I find that over and over. I mean, that's why I keep saying the most successful people are available because most people want something and no, not everyone's giving. Right. I think that's how I get access to people because it's always a reciprocal relationship. Sure. Always, always, always. Kevin Harrington, I know, is speaking over at TNC, yeah. right? Uh, he comes to me and goes, hey, can I speak at your secret knock? I go, why do you always want to speak there? He goes, because I always make a million dollars every time I do. It. <laughs> and I go, I guess I'd want to come back too, right? Because <laughs> of the so. deals that yeah. you do, right? right? And you don't think about that, but sure. the whole idea is, how can you constantly be giving to the people who are also giving to you? Right. Build that reciprocation, and that's where the miracles lie. You know, along the journey, I had an opportunity to meet amazing people, but I understand you and I get to interview a lot of the same people sure. too. Naveen Jain, yeah. I just interviewed for Wealth Hack. Oh, and, no way. And you met with That's him. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I met with him, and it, somebody had asked him, they say, Well, what's your morning routine look like? And he goes, That's not the right question. I would be asking me, What is your mindset and your processes and your system and processes, the way you think mm. about instead of what's my morning routine? He goes, Everybody can copy a morning routine and, you know, that's not going to make you successful. Hmm. How I think and the process that I go down, that's what's going to make you successful. It's so interesting. So people listen to this. I, I just want to stop because I, I didn't even get that takeaway. High five on that. Yeah, and what's thanks. cool about that is what you're saying is, look, if I say every day I get up, I go down to Starbucks, I get a cup of coffee right. and a croissant and come home and, you know, walk the dog and read the paper that's just the minutia right so what he's really saying is i clear my head i get in the car no one's talking to me that's it so it's that mindset that he puts himself in which is a really important thing pretty yeah. cool yeah no it's, it's really awesome and um we, we have an interview coming up in a couple of weeks so it, it'll be fun tell to him actually. i said hi well i will that's awesome <laughs> that you just met with him and everything so for wealth hacks so i definitely check out wealth hacks well, well, in a year from now, when it comes out, yeah. well, I, I, I want to tell you all my secrets, but I can't let them out of the bag right now. Maybe we can share like one or two, because... I just told you a pretty good one. <laughs> was, well, a couple of them, actually. What's interesting is along this quest, I keep realizing, though, is that the people, if you can surround yourself with people that are doing what you want to do, and then duplicate it in your own style, sure. those are the people that come out on top. Look, I don't do an exact talk like... Les Brown, even though Les Brown taught me how to speak, right. I'm not going to do the exact same one because right. then you just be a copycat. The idea is to put your own unique spin and take on it. For sure. And I, no, I think that's, that's definitely interesting. And one thing you mentioned was surrounding yourself with the right people. Mm -hmm. 
And as so many times, like for me, I live in Akron, Cleveland, Ohio. And so I don't get surrounded by all those people. So people say, well, why do you travel? Why do you go network and, and connect? I mean, I want to be surrounded by these people and learn from them and hopefully create value for them back myself. Mm -hmm. And whether it's having them on my show and being able to share their story and share their information, um, you know, and then learning from them what's got them to that point. What are those mindset? What is that thought process? And what are they doing to move to that next level that separates them from everybody else? It's funny. I, I think that's how we get all of your people moving here to California. <laughs> that same thing. <laughs> it seems like we're the hub for it's some all reason. Here. Everyone keeps coming here for right. a reason. I guess it's probably the weather, right? Right, yeah. The, and yeah, it's, the weather's always beautiful. So you got the book, you have Success Knocks, the, the Secret Group. Secret Knock. Secret Knock, sorry, my bad. So Secret Knock. And then, um, and then the movie coming out. So what do you spend your free time on? All these other things, the opportunities that keep are coming my way now because look, the law of attraction again is whatever you think the voo voo stuff. The real scientific version, as you know, is RAS, which is reticular activator right. system. What you seek, you start naturally seeing. So if I say double staircase, woo woo, people go, holy crap, look what I manifested. <laughs> Other people said, no, I look for it, therefore you see it. Right. So the whole concept is how can you start seeing these opportunities? Since I've been doing wealth hack, I'm seeking these opportunities and magically they're appearing. Uh, with your journey and with all the success and everything you have, what would you say, somebody that can go out and take action today, mm -hmm. what would you say, these are the three main points, or maybe there's just one major point, but you know, what, one of the three main points that they could take action on and start making transformations in their life? Seek it. So there's okay. an old Rumi quote, whatever you seek is seeking you. My uh, four-year-old kid, one of the coolest kids, every time we come home, he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out money. He <laughs> finds it on the ground, you know, wherever we're at the grocery store, right. he's always coming back. And I go, why is it no matter where we go, you always find money? And he says, that's easy, Dad. I look for it. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I know we kind of were starting to talk a little bit on the, um, the RAS. And it, it reminded me of... Uh, you know, you, you buy a car and that you never had before. And, you see the and then all Honda's of a sudden you see them all over the place. It's the same thing. So whatever you seek, whatever you look for is also seeking you in return. So it's very imperative to make sure that we're putting the thoughts out that we want. Right. Because the law of attraction does not work that you attract what you want. You only attract more of who you already are. That's it. Right. So that's why certain people have getting fights. When's the last time you got in a fight? Right? Because yeah. you don't right. seek that. But you, <laughs> the other thing, go, oh, I was in a bar, I got in a fight, go, I don't even know what that would be like, right? Because that's not yeah. what we seek. Sure. So therefore, whatever you seek is seeking you. So it's very important to be aware of what we're putting out so that we can get it back in return. And the funny thing, the way that you tap into the source, it's funny, in the airwaves right now, there's country music, rap music, and classical. Agreed? Right. We take a receiver, we dial in to an exact frequency, like 100.7, not 101 or 100.7, right. and we pull it from, right? Well, that's the same thing as information, knowledge, relationships, health, wellness, wisdom. Everything's around us as well. So everything is energy. And the sure. way that you pull it down is the questions in which we ask. Unfortunately, uh. here's what most people do. The universe is very literal. So we say, God, why does this always happen to me? The universe says, well, this is why you dumbass, and gives you more of that. Right. When you sit there and say, well, when's the shoe going to fall? When's this going to go bad? Tuesday at 4 o'clock. It's going to give you that exact answer. But if we start seeing, what's the opportunity in this challenge that I'm not seeing? Sure. All of a sudden, you start seeing that. Or, how, who's got my money today? Like the Grant Cardone, right? <laughs> yeah, it's always, and then all yeah, of a sudden, you start money. seeking. Right. The whole idea is, whatever you seek is sure. also seeking you. For sure. Uh, and I think... I, 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 at least my personal thoughts on this is there's so much negativity out there, whether it's the news, whether it's just information all around. And I think it's being able to filter all that out and really focus on. So like, I mean, we don't even watch the news at home. We don't even focus on that. And, you know, with my kids are eight and six and stuff. And, you know, they, you know, focus on uh, information that's going to help them in whatever they're doing, whether it's, you know, reading, whether it's uh, a specific, a show on a topic or whatever that they may watch or my daughter started a business over the summer just from watching my wife's company and everything and what That's she's fantastic. doing for skincare she wanted to do for pets mm. and so uh, th you know I think by uh, putting the positive and surrounding yourself um, in that I, I don't want to say positivity or optimistic but it is mm. um, you're creating that energy around yourself 
Well, you are creating the energy in what you put out, though. Right. Everything I, we just got done saying. It's yes. like, whatever you seek, uh, that's it. A lot of people sit there and go, I hate my news feed on Facebook. Well, guess what? Those are the people that you're interacting with. Right. Right? So, therefore, <laughs> that's why you're seeing ISIS beheading. You're not going to see that on my news feed. Right. I promise you. <laughs> you're not going to see any of that stuff because I will not allow that energy into my life. Right. And that's the way it kind of goes. It's so funny, but nowhere in PMA, positive mental attitude, does it say you also have to run away from reality. My mentor, David Corbin, wrote a book called Illuminate. Mm -hmm. And he says, you've got to accentuate the positive and not eliminate the negative. You accentuate the positive and illuminate the negative. As soon as you put a spotlight on it, you get rid of it. Right. If I have a first date, I knock on the door and I got a big old pimple, I say, all right, let's, let's get this out of the way. Here's count, you know, Mount Kilimanjaro. You laugh and I don't have to hide all that, yeah. right? Yeah. So by illuminating it, it also gives you the opportunity to repair. That you can't sense. walk into a doctor's office with a, you know, God forbid, melanoma and say I have a great mental attitude so it'll go away. Right. You have to sit and go, hey, look, I'm going to beat this with your attitude, but doc, what do we got to do to take some actions? For sure. No, that's awesome. Well, I know we only got a few minutes left. Uh, what's one piece of technology or something you just can't live without? Uh, my iPhone. I mean, no matter what, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> it's so funny because right now, uh, you know, we have more access in our pocket sure. to information that Bill Clinton did as the President of the United States of America. And I had an opportunity to meet with Marty Cooper, inventor of the cell phone. And it's one of the cool. greatest interviews. And I was writing a book called Stickability. Okay. And I says, what does stickability mean to you? And he goes, stickability has to be parallel with flexibility. It says, if you're not willing to adapt, you get stuck. And he uh, said, a spider monkey in the rainforest is the most quick, nimble creature, but no one could catch it. San Juan figured it out. He took a heavy log, drilled a tiny hole, dropped a peanut in, and left it at the base of the jungle. The monkey would reach in, grab a hold of it, and his fist becomes so big he can't pull it back out. <laughs> All he's got to do is let go, but he thinks that nut's saving him. Right. Hunter comes by an hour later and captures this monkey. Well, the, he says, is that your moral in life? But you're holding on to a car or a deal or a relationship wow. yeah. or fear. And what you think is saving you, just like the monkey thinks the nut is, could also be the thing that's leading to your own demise. Sometimes huh. you have to have the flexibility to let go, let go so you can live to fight another day. That's awesome. And guys, I, I hope you're taking some notes <laughs> here. If not, go back and rewind. Uh, Greg's been sharing some awesome information with Dropping us today. Dropping some knowledge bombs. That's right. Knowledge bombs are in the house <laughs> on Making Bank today. Uh, any last insights you want to leave our audience with before we have to? Probably the same old cliche that you've heard a thousand <laughs> times. You know, we're a reflection of the people we hang around the most. Our income, attitude, and lifestyle is the average of the group. Choose your friends wisely <clears throat> because that is a reflection of who you are. Definitely. And where can people find out about you? Yeah, just Google or just Google. go in a bookstore or, but more importantly, go to secretknock.co and apply and see if you make the cut to come play with the big dogs. Cool. And uh, if they were going to pick up one of your books to read, which one would they pick? Three Feet from Gold. Three I mean, I gold. think you'd absolutely love it. Not because I wrote it, because I had amazing ghost writers. In fact, uh, the person I co-authored the book with is Sharon Lecter, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor yeah. Dad with cool. Robert Kiyosaki. She's the one who actually brought the real life to that That's project. Awesome. And it's spectacular. Phenomenal. Well, I just want to thank you today for coming on Making Bank, being able to shoot this in your house and everything, and it was an honor to have you on today. I'll see you all later. Keep smiling. Yeah, thank you. Rock and roll. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.